uh, this sermon, uh, Our Family. I want to call it Our Family. In Our Family. I want to read to you Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 17. It says this, One day when Jesus was teaching, the, the writer gave us a detail. It says this, And the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting there. And they had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. And some men were carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and to try to take him to the house to lay him before Jesus. Verse 19 says this, when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went, to, they went up on the roof and they lowered him down on his mat through the tiles in the middle of the crowd. Right, right in front, front of Jesus. Jesus. Verse 20 says, says this. And, and when Jesus saw their faith. Everybody say their faith. faith. So it's interesting that God didn't, he didn't say, oh, I see the faith of this paralyzed man. man. It, it says, says when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven and, and you are healed. Lord, I pray for the next few moments that you may speak to your people, God. Lord, we didn't gather here and get ready and get our kids ready to come and to hear from me. But, Lord, I pray that you may bypass my limited understanding, my limited wisdom, and you might speak right to your people. Lord, I know people are going through a hardship in their lives, God. There are people that are, that are, that are desperate for a word from God today. So, Lord, would you speak to them today, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. So we've been in this series uh, entitled uh, Family Reunion. It's our desire uh, to build a strong family in a world where uh, a church like this doesn't make sense, a diverse church, uh, and not only in race, but in culture and style. And, and, uh, and, and so our world around us doesn't want this right here, doesn't want us to be a family. And one of the things we realize that in the kingdom of God, we're, we're called to be a family. And I just want to kind of just open up the invitation to start off this conversation. And, and is this, is that God wants you to be in his family. God always desires for you uh, to be in his family, no matter who you are, no matter your mistakes in the past, no matter what you're dealing with right now, no matter if you haven't been in church in many years, or I, I just want to invite you into the family of God because that's who God is. God is always inviting you into his family. He's, his door is always open. There's always food at the table at this family. There's always room uh, in, in his house in this family. There's, there's a place for you in this family. And so God's desire from the beginning of time is to build this massive family. And the result of sin and the evil in this world has called fractures in this family. So Jesus was sent on mission so that this family can be brought back together again. His desire is to bring his sons and his daughters back into his home. And this is why we call him our heavenly father. Here's why, because he wants to be your father. He wants you into his house today. And so we've been talking about this idea of being a family and being in the family, having the responsibilities of a family. And today I want to talk to you about what we do in this family and who we are in this family. I want to give some culture to this family. And there, there, there are some things that we do uh, as believers of Christ and as people who follow God that, that others don't do. And so I want to just real quick kind of give you a snapshot of what we do in this family. As you notice as we read this text, the Bible starts by saying this, that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were in the room. So Luke is setting us up and, and setting up the scene, and he's allowing us to get a background understanding that there are some people that's in the presence of this miracle that's about to happen that don't want this miracle to happen. There are Pharisees and teachers of the law, and these were people who were anti-Jesus. In fact, they didn't want Jesus and his new kingdom and his new covenant to come in. In fact, they were so in love with the religious way, the old way, the antiquated way. And I believe that sometimes if we're not careful, we can fall in the category of the Pharisees. We can get stuck in the old way of doing things. We can get stuck in the old way of worshiping God. Can I tell you today, it don't matter how much you worship God or how you worship God, as long as you're worshiping Jesus, you can worship God however you want to worship God. It doesn't matter what it looks like. 
So we can fall in the category of people not having faith like the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Or there's another category of people that we can fall in. And it really lends to my first point today. And my first point is this, is that it's okay not to be okay. This, 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 this guy was paralyzed. He, he was paralyzed. And in that culture, when you're paralyzed or have any other type of physical ailment, what happens is they naturally go towards who sin. In fact, we see all the time in scriptures, especially in the Gospels, that when someone had a physical problem, the, disciple, the disciples automatically assumed that that person was a sinner. Because in that day, they, they related sin and physical issues together. And obviously, we know that's not true at all. You can have physical issue and be righteous before God. But in that day, it was the same thing. Sin and being paralyzed was the same exact thing. And so in that day, like you, you would think that something was wrong with this paralyzed man. And something was wrong with him physically, but his heart was ready for a healing from God. And I just want to just remind you all that in the family of God, it's okay to not be perfect. Like, it's okay to have issues. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to have depression. It's okay to have physical problems. It's okay to, to have addiction. I, I really believe this, that in the kingdom of God, it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. And I just want to, I don't want to remind you and loosen you up because sometimes when people come to church, we automatically put these assumptions on people that we have to be perfect. So we put on our Sunday's best and we, we act right and we talk right, but we really know that we're all struggling here today. Like we all got issues. We all got drama in our lives. We got family drama. We got emotional drama. We got financial drama. We all got all type of drama. We got political drama. Can I get an amen, somebody? Can I tell you? I know that it's okay not to be okay. And in the kingdom of God and in this family, we're going to be okay with not being okay. It's okay if your marriage is struggling. It's okay if you've been through a divorce. It's okay if you got addiction. Here's why. Because in God's family, it's okay not to be okay. And I just want to just re release you all from the pressure of being perfect. I want to release you from the pressure of having it all together. Because can I just give you a news flash today that none of us have it all together. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. We all have fallen from the perfection of God. So therefore, we can all link arms and say in this family, it's okay not to be okay. Another thing I learned is that th there may be some people here that maybe you may not be physically paralyzed like this guy that we just read, but maybe you're emotionally paralyzed or maybe you're financially paralyzed or maybe you are just paralyzed with some other type of issue in your life. But I just want to encourage you all today, you're in a perfect place to be paralyzed. Because we have a God who can heal you. We have a God who can free you. We have a God who can touch your life. And I just want to give you a news flash, right? Just real quick. Our God can still heal people physically. Our God can still heal you emotionally. We serve a supernatural God. And I know maybe some, some of you who haven't been in the church in a long time, it becomes really weird at this point when we start saying that our God can heal you physically. But I just want to remind you that he can do it. And he will do it, and he's still doing it, y'all. So it's okay not to be okay, and it's okay if you fall in the category of being paralyzed this morning. The second thing that we know in our family is that it's in our family, pre-existing conditions don't even matter. You know, there's this huge debate right now in politics and in medical fields is that do you, do, you, do you accept people, do you cover people with insurance when they have pre-existing -condi pre conditions? Like, well, do you cover them? Do you, do you give them the policy if they have an illness already? But can I tell you, in the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter if you already have a condition because our God is for you. It does not matter at all. In fact, I just want to wipe away all pre-existing uh, pre conditions because God says when you're in his family, it doesn't matter what you came with. You could have came with addiction. You could have came with all type of issues. But God says in my family, you're always covered by the blood of the lamb. You're always covered by my grace. You're always covered by the grace of God. 
And I think sometimes we don't want to enter into the house because of our pre-existing conditions. But I want to remind you all today that in the kingdom of God, there is no pre-existing con- condition. Notice here in this text or any other narrative that records this story that no one asked this guy, why are you here? None of the four men who grabbed this guy, put him on a mat, took him to Jesus, none of them asked, hey, what did you do in your life to end up here? No one judged him before they put him on a mat, right? You know, sometimes Christians can be, they have the, the perfect heart, but they can be like, why are you here now? Why are you always got issues in your life? And just judging people. But can I tell you here in the text, we don't see nowhere in this scripture where the people that were surrounding this guy said, hey, why are you here? Because to be honest with you, it doesn't matter why you're here. Because in God's family, we know the ultimate reason why they're here. Because the love of our God, the love of our Father, the grace of our God today. I think oftentimes what we do is that we try to disqualify people with their actions. And we're about to say, oh my goodness, look at them. Or look at that person. And look at that person. But in our family, there is no gossiping about what other people are dealing with. Because we know we got drama in our own lives. So can I tell you, why are we here? We are here because of the grace of God. Why am I preaching in front of you? It's only because of the grace of God. Why are you sitting in that seat today? It's only because of the grace of God. Why you have breath in your lungs right now, it's only because of the grace of God today. I just want to let us know and set us free today that, number one, it's okay not to be okay. And also in this family, pre-existing conditions don't really matter. Get away with them. Stop disqualifying yourself from being in this family. You're welcome because of the grace of God. And I love it because the gospel is real simple because when God looks down and see our lives, he don't see Travis's selfishness when I'm towards my wife. He don't see when I'm giving her a hard time. He don't see when I'm kind of salty at her when she eats the last sweet potato pie. I mean, come on, somebody. I wanted that pie, and I prayed for that pie, and you ate that pie when I was asleep. Come on, sister. She's like, I didn't eat the pie. The kids ate the pie. Well, one of y'all ate the pie. Come on, somebody. Like when God looks down at me, he don't see none of that stuff. And sometimes I'm short and sometimes I'm not perfect. But can I tell you, when God looks down on me, he don't see my record. He sees Jesus' record. He sees perfection. He sees an awesome God. Can I tell you today, God doesn't see your drama because you have been covered by the blood of the Lamb. That's why I love being covered. I love this family. It's free in this family. I don't know some, right, some type of theology I had growing up. And the theology I had growing up was that if I messed up, God would be disappointed with me. And, and the theology I had was I had to walk on eggshells in the kingdom of God and in this family simply because if I mess up, God would stop loving me. And God's and my and my performance and God's love was based on my performance. But can I tell you, God's love for you is not based on your performance. It's based on Jesus' performance. And Jesus' performance is perfect. He's the victor. He is awesome. He is great, y'all. So the other day, my, my daughter, she had a, a soccer game. And um, and so she's, my youngest daughter's playing soccer, and it's just the YMCA soccer, so it's nothing really deep at all, but it's just, you know, a whole bunch of kids get out there and just run and, and uh, try to kick the ball uh, inside the goal. And, and, and so like, the first game last week, man, my daughter was just crushing it. I mean, she was just, like, giving people elbows. I'm like, I'm proud of you, girl. There you go. Give the people's elbow. Come on, somebody. Kicking the ball hard. I'm like, come on. I just loved it. And I was celebrating her. I said, Jada, you can choose whatever we can go for lunch. She says, I want to go to Olive Garden. Well, Olive Garden is yours, girl. But yesterday, man, it was a different Jada. She was tired. And I'm a coach. And I'm, fr- you know, I'm one of those coaches that, I'm frustrated at my daughter. I'm like, Jada, run. And she's not even running. She's just looking at the ball. I'm like, Jada, what are you looking at? Jada, what are you doing? She said, Daddy, I'm tired. I said, Jada, the field is 10 feet long. How are you tired? So after, after the game, we just go home, and it was just, you no, know, it wasn't drama. There was no Instagram post. There was no Facebook post. I'm somewhat salty, y'all. Come on. So last night, I was putting my daughter to bed, and she said to me, Daddy, are you mad at me? 
And I did not respond to her with the same excitement as I did the week previous because of her performance. But can I tell you, that's her natural father. But her heavenly father responds to her the same. Game one, her, her winning, or game two, her losing. God responds to you the same every day. He wakes up excited for your purpose, excited for your future, excited for who you are. I just want to encourage you all that God's excitement for you is not based on your performance. It's based on God's performance. And that's a, isn't that a good word, y'all? And don't that free you up a little bit that you can loosen up in this family? You can take off your shoes a little bit in this family? You can open up the refrigerator in this family because that's the family of God. Not only in this family do we know that it's okay not to be okay, that it's okay that in our family it's okay to have pre-existing conditions, but in our family we remove any barriers to get to Jesus. Any barriers for you to get to Jesus, we remove them. Can you notice in the text right here in this, in this scripture, what happened was they were taking this guy to Jesus, and the crowds were surrounding God. And so what they had to do is go on top of a, a roof and dig through the roof to lower this guy's body to get to Jesus. Now, I just want you to historically kind of go back with me a little bit right now. These are houses that are not made with the same material that is made with today. In fact, these houses were made with mud and hay mixed together. This is hardened mud. It's very hard because of the sun in New Palestine. And so this is not some easy project that they're doing. They don't have tools that we had uh, that we have right now. They didn't have uh, uh, all type of drills to dig through that. What they had to do was put water on top of the roof to wet the mud, right, over time, tons of water to wet the mud, and then they had to dig with their own hands to create a hole the size of a human being, a grown man, to lower his body inside the roof. Now, we notice that this is not an easy assignment. It's not an easy project. And can I tell you that in this family, when we want to invite people to Jesus and meet Jesus, it may not be easy. But can I tell you that in this family, we're not worried about our comfort. This has never been a cruise ship or a country club. This has always been a hospital for the sick. This church has never been a place where you come and enjoy good words, some good music, and go home. This church has always been a battleship with a mission, on, with an assignment to reach people that's far from God who feels like they're not qualified for God. Can I tell you that what these people did is what we're, we're called to do as God's family. We're called to remove any barrier for people to come to church. And so can I tell you, if we got to change things up in our church so that people can meet Jesus, I'll change things up so that people can meet Jesus. If it caused me to come here early, to show up early, to get on the dream team and serve my church, I'll do exactly that. Here's why. Because I truly, truly believe that this work is hard work. We got to be willing to get mud on our hands. I think we're living in a culture where we don't want to get dirty at all. And th these four men, what they did, they got on this roof and they poured water inside this roof and they began to dig through the mud. And Because here's why. Because I'm willing to dig through the mud of people's lives so that they can get to Jesus. And some of us, what we do is that we judge them, but we judge the mud on their lives. And so we don't want to dig through the mud. In fact, we want to run away from the mud. And so people who have issues, uh, addictions and issues in their marriages and issues in their relationship, issues in their parenting, what we do is that we run away away from people who have mud on their lives. But our job has never been the people who run away from people who got mud on their lives. Our job has always been to dig through the mud. Dig through the mud. And I just want to be a church. I really want to be a family that's not afraid of mud, that's willing to work hard and do what it takes to bring people to Jesus. Because can I tell you, it is worth the digging. It is worth going through the extra mile, showing up and serving and giving to this family. It's worth doing it. Here's why. Because one day we get to present someone to the master, to the savior, to the one who can change paralyzed hearts and to set them free. That is so worth it today. 
And so what we do every Sunday and behind the scenes and how we show up in the band shows every Thursday and get ready and the kids ministry shows up early and get ready and the production team shows up and get ready and the camera people shows up and get ready and the preachers show up and, and work on words and the worship team show up and practice their songs. Can I tell you, it's worth it every time. All day, every day. I'm willing to dig through mud. I'm willing to sacrifice and let it cost me a little bit. Can I tell you, we, we never really kind of go to the text right here. Like, who's going to fix the hole in the roof? <laughs> you ever thought about that? How, like, there, there, there is an expense that comes with this, y'all. This is not a cheap experience right here. This is not a cheap, like, kind of, you know, like, assignment. This, this is costly. I'm not sure if I was the owner of the house. I'll be like to those four men, praise God for y'all faith. But I'm going to need y'all to take up a love offering to fix this hole in the roof. Come on, somebody. Like, I'm going to need you to fix this. Here's why. Because when you bring people to Jesus, it's costly. It may cost you something. It may cost your resources. It may cost your time. It may cost your talents. But can I tell you, it's worth it even if it costs you something. So in our family, we realize that it's okay not to be okay. That in our family, we realize that pre-existing conditions don't really matter. And in our family, we realize we remove every barrier for people to get to Jesus. And my last point, because in our family, we get healed. Isn't that good? In this family, you're going to get fixed. You won't be perfect overnight. It won't be easy overnight. But in this family, you can get healed. You can find freedom. You don't have to be stuck. You don't have to remain there. You don't have to remain in that dark place. In this family... You can find real joy. In this family, you can find purpose in your life. And some of you, all we're doing is going from week to week, month to month, year to year, and you're not really accomplishing anything of significance. Can I tell you today, in this family, man, you, 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 we're going to find healing for your marriage, healing for your heart, healing for your kids, healing for your purpose, healing for your future. We're, we're, we're going to find it in this family. Because in this family, we realize that no matter what you're walking through, no matter what you're dealing with, Healing is possible. I'm not sure, Lindsay, probably a few years ago when you first got that diagnosis, I'm sure you had all type of things in your head. Is it possible? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to baby girl? But in this family, we can have moments like today where we can celebrate your healing. I think Micah is a representation of, of what, what this paralyzed guy experienced. You know, I mean, Michael is amazing, and her faith is amazing. But it really was the faith of her mom, Lindsay, and her dad, Sandro, taking her to the doctor every single day, every week doing that, going back and forth, going through all the appointments. And it was the work of their faith that led towards the healing of her daughter. Can I tell you today? that we are, to, we are to exemplify what Lindsay and Sandro did with Micah. If there's someone out there that got issues and they're lonely and they're depressed, our job, if it takes us every day going knocking on their door and praying for them, showing up with a meal, showing up and giving them grace of God, can, can I tell you, we are to bring them to the doctor every single day, and we are to bring Jesus to them so that one day they can have a moment where their body is lowered through the roof and they have an encounter with Jesus and healing is possible. Can I tell you today, healing is possible for your marriage, healing is possible for your life, it's possible for, for your heart. Can I tell you, I am willing to to go through this process because I love days like Micah Day. Can I tell you, this is a celebration that we're doing once a year, but can I tell you, Micah Day could be every day. In fact, your day could be Micah Day right now because God can heal your life. God can restore your life. God can bring what the enemy meant for evil and turn it around for good because every day in the kingdom of God and in this family is Micah Day. Come on, somebody. Every day is Micah Day. You know, I was thinking about today, and maybe some of you are here today, and you need to experience healing in your life. You could be in a category of three people. Number one, you could be the category of the Pharisees and the teachers. You, you could be faithless, like the Pharisees and the teachers. And you can, you can 
you can judge things from a distance. You can sit in the back and question God and question leaders and question and, and just in the back. You can be in that category today. Or you can be in another category where God's calling you. It's time for you to pick up a mat and put somebody on it and carry them to Jesus. Maybe, maybe it's time for you to get involved again. Maybe it's time for you to serve once again. Maybe, maybe it's time for you to lean in and engage once again. Maybe it's time for you to put some mud on your hands. And it may cost you something. It may cost you pride. It may, it may cost you resources. It costs you time. Maybe it's time for you to get back to the family again. Or maybe you're here today. And you walked in here physically, but your heart has been paralyzed. Maybe your emotions are stuck in a past relationship and you can't get free from it. Maybe you're stuck with a past hurt in the past and you can't get free from it. Maybe, maybe your future seems so dim because of what happened in the past and you're paralyzed by a past experience or you're paralyzed by an addiction. You're paralyzed by issues in your life. But today, the Lord says, I want to bring you in front of a Savior who can bring healing in your life today. One moment can change your life today. So I want you to do right real quick. I want you to all kind of close your eyes. If you're watching online, kind of close your eyes real quick. Just bow your heads, bow your hearts before the Lord today. If you're here today and you want to say, you know what, it's time for me to get back home. It's time for me to come back home. I want you to make that commitment in heart. I'm not going to make you stand or raise your hands. That's between you and God. But what I do want to do, I, I want to make sure that you know that God is for you. I want you to know that God is, is with you, and he wants you to be in this family so bad. He's welcomed you into this family. He wants you to know that it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to be heartbroken. It's okay to have issues. We're going to get through it together. I want to I wanna pray over you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who right now, maybe they're faithless. They could be like the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. They, they could be in the back spiritually and judging everything they see. But God, would you set them free today, Lord God? Touch them, give them faith, give them hope, God. I pray for the ones who need to pick up a mat and start serving somebody. Get some mud on their hands. Give up their time, their resources, so they could do what God's called them to do. And lastly, Lord, I pray for healing for the one who's paralyzed today. God, touch their hearts, we pray. Lord, give them freedom. God, touch them. Lord, I pray that today, Lord, could be a day. It could be their Micah day, God. It could be their day. They're set free, Lord. So I pray that right now, in the name of Jesus, set them free once and for all, God. Let them walk in the freedom and the purpose of God. Lord, your word says, who the Son sets free is free indeed, God. So, God, we stand on your word that you will set us free. And we pray all these things. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise.